Good evening. Come on in. I had one of my cameras turned sideways. I have to fix it. Let's see. Okay, I think I fixed it. It says rotate your device. Let's see if I got it straight now. Nope, still sideways. Good evening, come on in. I have one of my cameras turned the wrong way, so give me just a second. Give me one second. One second. Let's see if I can get it turned the right way. I don't think I got it now. Let's see. I think I got it right. Yep, we got it. All right. Okay, we got them all right. All right, good evening, everybody. This is Benita, and you're watching uh, What's On Your Mind. It's been a while since we've been on. You know, we've been busy. I have been extremely busy. This is my last year of school, so I'm trying to get all that finished up. Um, but tonight, I want to talk to you about um, preparing for what you pray for. Uh, specifically, I'm talking to the women, but men, of course, you're welcome to chime in, and um, I want your feedback on this subject as well. All right, so everybody come on in. Do me a favor when you come in, click like and click share, if you will, for me. All right, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, thank you guys so much for tuning in um, since we began in June. You guys have been wonderful about tuning in. You guys have been excellent about, some of you have been excellent about sharing the video. You've helped us thus far reach up to 8,000, a little bit over 8,000 people. And for that, we're extremely grateful, being that we did our first show in June. June 1st was our first show. And so as of today, we have reached over 8,000 people. And so we're only looking to do better and go higher once we reach a uh, crossover into 2020. And with your help, we can make that happen. All right. So again, you guys know I'm streaming from multiple outlets. So good evening, Facebook. Good evening, YouTube. And good evening, Instagram. All of you guys are welcome. I'd like to get your feedback on tonight's subject as well. Um, it, it's an old topic, but it's, I want to talk to you about it from a different perspective. And like I said, I want to specifically, specifically talk to the women so we can get some understanding on some things. But again, men, you're welcome to chime in. I would love to hear from our men on this particular subject. Um, now we may go into uh, more than one part to this because it is quite meaty, if you will. So we're gonna talk about what we don't get into tonight. We're certainly gonna try to pick it up tomorrow. Um, it looks like I'll be able to, 
but just in case I don't, um, uh, okay, you're not started over here. Let's go back out and restart you. Um, hopefully they can pop in. Uh, hopefully they'll be able to pop in soon. So they'll get in where they fit in. But we are live streaming on YouTube. Some of you, uh, you can watch us on your big screen TV. If you if you have the YouTube um, app on your big screen TV, go ahead and you can watch us live now on your big screen TV uh, just by looking up our live feed, uh, Benita Bradley Ministries. You can find us on YouTube now and watch us on your big screen TV if you like to. All right. All right. So tonight we're going to talk about. Um, let God wake him up. We're going to talk about, we're going to com be coming from Genesis, the second chapter. I was thinking about this the other day and I started a, a post about it. And the more I thought about it, the more it became incumbent upon me that this is something we may need to talk about a little bit more uh, in depth. Okay. So that's what we're going to talk about tonight. All right. Let me see if they're not in. Let me go out and get these guys in because I thought they were in. And so we're going to talk about that a little bit tonight. So if you guys would be so kind um, to stay tuned and we're going to get them on the line. Good evening. Blessings, uh, Mr. Washington. Blessings to you. Let's see if we can get them on the line over here. There they are. All right, there they are. Good evening. There they are. All right, we got everybody in now. All right, so we're going to be talking about Genesis, the second chapter tonight. We're going to be talking about when God put Adam into this deep, deep sleep and he took a rib out and he formed Eve from that rib. So we're going to be talking about that rib and we're going to be talking about what are we supposed to be doing as women while the man is asleep. More specifically, uh, I really want us to get to the point where we allow God to wake the man up. So often we as women, we get in a hurry because, you know, we've been single for so long. And I hear a lot from women that, oh, I'm getting tired of waiting, but I don't want to rush God, but God need to hurry up, you know, kind of hurry up and wait kind of deal going on. So we, we want God to hurry up, but we don't want to be in a hurry. We don't want to seem you know, desperate. A lot of women don't want to seem like, you know, they're, they're, they're chasing a man or what have you. So I've heard from a lot of women that are saying, well, I'm ready to get married, you know, but I don't, I just don't want anything, you know, and I'm not trying to tell God what to do, but this is what I want. They, you know, everybody got a list, you know, men have a list, women have a list of what requirements or, or what they like or what have you. Everybody has a list or you have some notion of what you want you know, somewhere in your mind. All right. So, um, hold on, let me turn this one down. You have a notion of what you want in your mind. And so, and it's nothing wrong with having a list. A list just means that you've actually taken the time to sit, think about what you actually want, you know, out of a relationship, out of a maid, out of a spouse or what have you, whether you're male or female, it just means you've given some thought to what you want and what you don't want. Okay. Really, that's all that it means. Okay. So I don't want you to think that having a list is a bad thing. You know what I'm saying? Because all of us inadvertently jot down some things that we would like even me and if they don't jot them down or jot them down they still have in their mind i like a woman that looks like this or like that or like this or i like a woman who who can do this or who can do that or i like a woman who will be you know comparable to me in this area i like a woman i can take to the to the mayor's ball or, or to the football game you know or what have you everybody has something that they like you know, and so there's nothing wrong with that. The problem that we're running into is having the ability to wait for what we like, you know, and to wait on God to uh, to foster those characteristics in a person versus us trying to make something happen uh, and versus us trying to make someone be who we think they should be, how we think they should be, when we think they should be there. I know a lot of people 
to think that because by a certain age, people should have this, that, and the third already done. They should have this, that, and the third already accomplished. You know, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's absolutely nothing wrong with thinking or feeling that way. I just don't want you to set that in stone so that it becomes the marker for how you view everybody comes your way. I don't want you to use it as a marker or a bar that you said to say, well, if a man's in his 30s or if a man's in his 40s or 50s or what have you, he should have A, B, and C already lined up. In some cases, that is absolutely the truth. However, not in all cases because life happens to us all. Life happens. It could, it could be recovering from a divorce. They could be recovering from a long-term illness. They could be recovering from you know, uh, uh, loss of job, loss of income. It's a lot of things that'll set us back, you know, that people don't know uh, right away just on the outside looking in. And so it's sometimes it's easier to say that, well, you should be at this point or you should be at that point at your age. However, everybody doesn't uh, travel the same path sometimes. And we all don't have the same opportunities. It depends on where you come from, how you was raised, what advantages you took, you know, what opportunities you took advantage of. All of that comes into play, your geographical location, your educational background, the household, the community that in which you were raised, all of that comes into play, your spiritual uh, background, all of that comes into play when considering where people are in life, where they should be versus where you might or might not be, you know. And so I want you to consider all of that while we're talking tonight. I'm going to try not to be too long because I, I meant to come on last night, but then all of a sudden I got sniffy and sneezy, you know, and when that happens, your voice starts to go up and down, up and down. And I'll be around here sound like Miss Barry White and I'll be like, you know, what's wrong with her voice? And so I'm going to try to get through as much of this as I can. And uh, whatever we don't get done tonight, I promise we're going to come back tomorrow because I really want to get this out. OK, so again, tonight we're going to be talking about uh, let God wake him up. We're going to talk. I want to really talk to the women. So women, when y'all come in, click like and click share for me. Uh, don't be afraid to share the video. You know, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to let somebody know. Yeah, I tune into her show. You know, sometimes we don't share stuff because we don't want nobody to know we watch certain shows. But I share, you know, because I, I, I'm i just not into all of that kind of stuff. You know, um, if it's a good show and if it's um, the commentary or the content is relevant to what I believe people need to hear, then of course I'm going to share it. So, um, but to each his own. So when you come in, if you would do me a favor, click share for me, that would really help us out. All right. So we're going to start out with our scripture tonight. Let's just say a quick prayer. Father, we just thank you. Give us understanding and clarity. Most of all, show us your will for us during these days and times. And we'll be careful as in all things to give you the glory in Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So let's get right into it. Remember, I said we're going to come out of Genesis tonight. We're going to be talking about Genesis, uh, the second chapter, verses uh, 21. Let's do 21. And well, uh, let's start at 20, 21 through 23. All right. Let's do that. 21 through 20 through 23. Let's do that. Okay. So 20 says, and Adam gave names to all the cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found and help me for him. Verse 21. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam and he slept and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereafter. Verse 22, and the rib which the Lord God had taken from Adam, from man, brought, made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, verse 23, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. And so when I was reading it, I kept wondering, well, why did God have to put Adam to sleep in order to take Eve out of his side in order to make the woman? Why did Adam have to be put to sleep or why was it necessary that she be taken from his side? You know, all of those questions came to my mind. 
And then I started thinking about how sometimes we get in a hurry and we try to rush God and what and what he knows is best. And so we understand that Eve was made while Adam was asleep. And so I always thought that God did that so that men could not take the glory or the credit for something that God had created. That was my thinking. And I still kind of believe that. But we're going to get into some research, into some notes, into some studying that I've done on that particular subject. And we're going to get um, get down into the meats and potatoes of that. All right. So the first thing we want to look at is that uh, Eve was made while Adam slept. So and women, what I want you guys to do, I want you to take this from the scriptural perspective. And then I want you to, to apply it to your life where you are now. And then I want you to understand. So if the man is asleep, what am I to be doing while he's sleeping? There's some things we need to be doing as women while, while our prospective husband is asleep. You know, and so while he's sleeping, also during this these sessions, I want to tell you what we need to be doing to prepare for the thing that we're praying for. Many of you, many of us are praying for not just a husband, but a good husband, a solid husband, somebody who is stable in, in many areas and someone who is, you know, uh, able to cover us and all of that. Everything that you hear, that's what women are looking for. You know, some go to go to the other side of the spectrum and say, well, I want a man with a lot of money. I want a man with this. I want a man who's good in bed. You know, I want a man this, that, and third. Some women, they only want to marry preachers. You know, some women only want to marry businessmen. You know, everybody has their whatever they like, you know, and there is absolutely no judgment from over here honey because you just like what you like you know i like what i like you know so we're not here to say well you shouldn't have that you shouldn't want that what i am here to tell you is that there is a way that you can prepare yourself for the very thing that you're praying for because before you know it if you are sincere in your prayer and if you allow God to do what he does best and you allow God to do his work in his way, his will, according to his time. And then when you are presented to one, then you'll know it's God. You know, we're going to talk about, well, how did Adam even know who he was if he was asleep the whole time she was being created? This is going to be incredible. Going to be incredible. All right. So I hope you got some. Uh, pen and paper out if you like, or, you know, you go back and watch the replay if you can, or what have you. Um, hey, Instagram. So I can't really see what you guys are saying. So I'm going to have to let me go over here and go live with you guys so I can see what you're saying. Give me one second to get live in the comments with Instagram. I can see what they're saying. Okay. All right. So here's the first thing we want to talk about. So we read the scripture. Now let's talk about God made Eve while Adam was asleep. So I was doing some research and here's what I found. So this is an article. Um, many of you are familiar with Watchmen Knee. A lot of us that have been through any formal Bible training, we've had to read it, just about everything Watchmen Knee wrote. So many of you leaders or you teachers, or you pastors or apostles, you guys are already familiar with Watchman Nee and what he what he teaches and and all of that kind of stuff. So he's here's an excerpt from uh, one of his articles um, that the church uh, Eve made from Adam's sleep. OK, so it says we've already seen that Eve was not made from the dust, but of Adam. Adam was the material of which Eve was made. He says, likewise, Christ is material for the church. God used Christ to make the church. 
Because now we'll see how Eve was made and how the church was made. So Watchman Nee now is making the comparison between how God made uh, Eve and how he also made the church. Okay, so both uh, we're going to get into it and see how both uh, had to be the result of a deep sleep happening. Okay, the, the difference between the two deep sleep is one is considered a death. And the other one is just considered a deep sleep. Okay, and we're going to show get into the show you which one is which. Of course, we know that Adam did not die. You know, he was put into a deep sleep, but he did not die. So I want you to get that understanding. So again, we read Genesis 2, 21 through 23. We already read that. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam and he slept. And he took one of his ribs. And close up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. Listen to this. And he brought her unto the man. She didn't go find the man on her own. She didn't go present, present herself to Adam. She didn't go and wake Adam up. Boy, wake up. I'm here. You know, she didn't do all of that. You know, um, but it says that the Lord God brought her to him. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because why? She was taken out of man. All right. So nowhere we see that the woman has to do anything now to be created, to be recognized, to be called woman. She has absolutely nothing to do except allow God to do what he's doing. Her part is to really just submit to the will of God. And I know this might seem a little old fashioned to you guys and to a lot of people, it may seem a little old fashioned, but if we're going to get this marriage deal right, and if we're going to get this relationship deal right, we got to go back to the beginning. We got to get some Bible soundness to how we do things. Because y'all know I'm telling the truth. Everything is just everywhere these days and everybody is doing whatever they want to do. All right. And so then we're wondering why the divorce rate in the church is just as high, if not higher uh, than the divorce rate in the non-church. You know, and so we have got to kind of put a let's put a cap on that let's change those numbers let's change those dynamics let's change those statistics you know and remember i told you the way you change the outcome um uh, is to change and manipulate the variables so if we begin to manipulate and change the variables then we can change the outcome of a situation we cannot expect a different outcome if we keep using the same variables and right now what we're using, what we're seeing is not working because we're still getting divorced. We're still committing adultery. We're still having outside kids. You know, that uh, outside kid is, is I'm married to this man, but I have a baby by somebody else. Or he's married to me and he has a baby by someone else that he's not married to while he's married to me. That's what having outside kids mean, okay? And we're seeing a whole bunch of this going on through the church. And, and it's just really rampant throughout our leadership in Christendom. And if we're going to see something different, then we have to begin to do something different. We got to say something different. We got to behave in a different way. We got to start calling wrong, wrong and right, right. We can't keep cross, you know, crossing those two up and calling wrong, right and right, wrong. And, oh, y'all just do it. And who's who's going to judge you? You know, everybody got that. Who's going to check me? You know, and all this kind of stuff. But honey, listen, child, if we don't do something, we, we're going to continue to see all this stuff going on that we're seeing and what's going to eventually happen. Well, it's already happening. We're going to keep seeing all of these indictments against the church. And then you, when people say, well, that's why I don't deal with church people, then we get all up in an uproar when in actuality, it's us that's giving them good reason to say the things that they are saying and to hold the indictments that they hold. And they're not altogether wrong. And so if we want to make them wrong in what, they, what they're saying against the church, then we need to start doing right. All right. And the only way I know to get us back on track, remember, I always talk about uh, reformation. And the only way, I know to, only way I know to get us back on track, we got to go back to the word. All right. All right. So, guys, I'm live. Any comments with you all? I can 
uh, see what you're saying and respond back to you in real time. All right. So, so we see that now Adam is put into a deep sleep. God, he puts him into sleep and he slept. He didn't fight the sleep. He didn't try to stay awake while God told him to go to sleep. He obeyed the will of God. The Bible says, and he slept. That means he came into agreement with the will of God. He came into agreement with whatever God was doing through him, to him, and by him at that particular time. So then he took one of his ribs and then he closed up his flesh instead thereof. This is one of the first transplants. This is the first transplant. We get to see, even before modern medicine, we get to see a transplant being performed. All right. It says, and the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man and said, and Adam said, this is now bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. You should be called woman because she was taken out of man. All right. So then here's what's going on. Remember, I told you we're going to see the correlation between uh, Adam being put into a deep sleep, God bringing Eve out of her, and then Christ being put into a deep sleep and God bringing the church out of her. So we're going to see the correlation between those two. All right. So then God brought forth the church out of the death of Christ. And this is why it's important, women, when you're waiting on your husband. And this is why it's important that you don't wake him up before time. You know, some of Solomon talks about that. We'll get into that tomorrow in part two. You don't want to wake him up before time. You don't want to disturb him while he's resting. Because I always tell people, you really don't know what conversation people are having with God when they're in a deep sleep. Even when they're on an anesthesia, you don't ever know what people are saying to God, what the conversation sounds like between them and God. Because I still believe that God speaks. I believe he still talks to us, uh, not only corporately, but individually. I still believe that God answers us. When we pray, I believe he talks to us. I still believe that. So regarding the death of Christ, the words in Genesis, the second chapter, are very special. It says the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. That's verse 21. You guys remember we read that. Now, it does not say that God uh, caused Adam to die. All right. He didn't cause him to die, but he caused him to fall into a deep sleep. So said the scriptures. Now, if death had been mentioned, then, of course, we would have had to hear then at that time about sin being involved. And we already know uh, you go back up to verse 17 when it talks about uh, eating from the tree of good and evil. And he talks about uh, how that would bring about death. So then we know sin would have to be involved at this point in order to bring about death, because at that point, sin had, sin had not entered in, all right, because it had that relationship with God, all right, so we understand that death and sin now are related, all right, so then Adam's sleep typifies the aspects of Christ's death, which was not related to redemption, in the death of Christ, there was an aspect which was not related to redemption, but to the release of himself. It says we are not saying that death of Christ is not for redemption. We truly believe that it is. However, his death involved an aspect uh, which is not related to redemption. Well, what is that? This aspect is the releasing of himself for the creation of the church. Hence, we have the body of Christ taken out of where? Christ's body, okay? Like we have one man taking where? Out of the body of who? Man, all right? And, and I pray you guys are getting this. And I'm not saying it's a new relation. I'm not saying any of that. I'm just saying that this is what my assignment is to bring this information and to teach on this, okay? Because I think what, what's happening with a lot of women, particularly church women, you know, we feel like, well, if we pray about something and then an answer looks like what God might send, we will jump on it right away without really understanding uh, how does a man supposed to identify his wife. We're going to get into that, too. Uh, if we don't have time tonight, we'll certainly get into it tomorrow. All right. So. Adam's sleep typifies the aspect of Christ's death. All right, we understand that. 
So now, uh, it says God is taking something out of Christ and using it to create the church. Therefore, the sleep here is used to typify his death through which man receives life. Okay, you all know through Christ's death, we receive not just life, but we receive eternal life. All right. So redemption and the receiving of life are two distinct things. Redemption involves a negative aspect of dealing with our sins. We have sinned and we deserve to die. Therefore, Christ came to bear our sins. His death accomplished redemption for us. This aspect of his death is related to sin. But there is another aspect of his death, which is not related to redemption. And that is when he imparts himself to us so that through his death, we may live. All right. Through his death, we may receive life and we can live. We can live the abundant life. We can live a happy life. We can live a fulfilled life. You know, um, we can live a life that we don't have to suffer and scrape and scram all the time, you know, and be angry and be in contention with one another all the time. You know, that's really no way to live. So Adam's sleep was not for Eve's redemption. It was so that a rib could be taken out of him for her creation. Again, keep in mind that sin had not entered into this particular scene. Um, you would have to go to Genesis 3 to see that part. So Eve came into existence through Adam. Eve was able to receive life because Adam slept. So it is in the same manner, an aspect of the death of Christ, that the church now is able to live. Okay, you guys starting to see the, the correlation between the two. So I, I say to the women, uh, don't wake the man up before time. If he's sleeping, let him sleep. Let God do what he's going to do in him. All right. So our next uh, topic is why did God put Adam into a deep sleep? Why couldn't he just reach in, take Eve out and, you know, let him see the whole process. Let him have a say in the process, you know you know, just look down and, you know, see him opening him up, this, that, and the third. Why did God actually put him to sleep in order to do that? Surely he's God. You know, he didn't necessarily have to put him to sleep or did he? You know, what was God thinking? What was his reason for putting Adam to sleep? Well, let's look at another story I found. Uh, another article called Why Did God Put Adam to Sleep by Simone Samuels. It's a pretty good article she wrote, and I thought it was really meaty. But I wanted to share it with you guys, all right? So <laughs> the first thing she talks about is that Adam was created because he was single. It's fun, something I thought was funny. Uh, she said she didn't have much sympathy for Adam because he wasn't alone like everybody think for days and years and years. She makes the argument that if Adam and Eve were created on the same day, according to uh, Genesis 1, 27, 28, um, her argument is that Adam was only single for a few hours <laughs> and not for days and years like we think he was or like many of us have been single uh, for days or months or years or whatever you qualify, you know, and let, let me tell you this, single is not legally married, okay? Single is not separated. Single is not uh, almost divorced. Single is not what we filed the papers. Single is not I'm waiting for the other person to sign the papers. Single is not, well, we've already divided up all our assets. That's not single. Single is when you are not legally married to anyone. Then you are qualified as single. If you are married, but you guys are separated, you're still married. If you're married, you're waiting on the other person to sign the divorce papers. You're still married. If you're married and you file for divorce, but you have received a, a final uh, dissolution of marriage paperwork, 
you're still married, all right? You cannot hold yourself out as single until you are legally divorce then at that point you can say that you're single and i think that's where a lot of us are getting into trouble because we're holding ourselves out as one thing when we're not okay and i do think that that's unfair to people that you that people get interested in you and then to me it's misleading to me it's a little misleading women are doing it men are doing it but it's misleading nonetheless to allow someone to get into a relationship or a situationship, as y'all call it these days, or whatever you may call it, is to get that in, kind of involved with you when you know you guys can't really go anywhere legally, you know, until you undo yourself from the last situation that you were in, okay? And so let's just be fair, uh, put all your cards on the table and let people know up front. I'm not legally divorced or, you know, I'm almost divorced or the other person won't sign the paper or let people know where you are, you know, before feelings get involved. OK. So she's saying that Adam was only single for a few hours, actually, before he met Eve and not single, single like a lot of people have been for years. And ladies, let me tell you this. I don't know. It's just my personal opinion. There's no documentation to uh, back this up. This is just, again, my personal opinion. Ladies, I don't think it's advantageous for, for us or for you to tout, like, how, many, how long you've been single, you know, or how long you've been celibate. I don't think that's advantageous for you to put that out there, particularly over social media, because sometimes that can attract the wrong element. I, you guys have heard me say this before, and I stand firm by what I'm saying. I think that attracts the wrong element to you when you put that out there like that, because nine times out of 10, uh, somebody will hear that and they'll think, oh, if you haven't had a man in that long, then you might be an easy target. If you haven't had a man in that long, all he got to do is say your name the right way and boom, he got you. You know, if you haven't had a man in, in that long, all he got to do is, you know, say the right thing at the right time, catch you off guard, what have you. You might come off to him as an easy prey, P-R-E-Y, you know. And so you want to be careful about how much information you put out there you know, when you're starting to date or, or you're interested in someone, be careful about how much information you put out there early on in the dating phase, in the getting to know you phase, in the collection of data and information phase. Don't put too much out there too soon because, again, you don't want to open yourself up to something that may not be for you. OK, and you most certainly don't want to put yourself out there as someone who is desperate and lonely. You don't want to do that. So I don't think it's necessary or I don't think it's advantageous to tout that. Uh, well, I've been, you know, celibate for three years. I've been celibate for five years. Well, I've been celibate for 10 years. Oh, I haven't had a man in 20 years. I don't think that's advantageous to put out there like that, you know, or I, I just don't. I just don't think it's good common sense, like I said, because it allows people to perhaps see you as an easy mark or easy target. So you want to be careful about what you put out there when it comes to being single, okay? Or when it comes to being telling how long you've been celibate. Really, nobody should know that information except for somebody you intend to marry. All right. But just putting that out there uh, on GP alone, I don't think that's wise, okay, ladies? All right, men, that can go for you too. All right, let's get back into it. Um, he said, she says, with everything God created, he said that it was good, Genesis 1. But when he looked at the first human, the first man, he saw that there was something that was not good. Adam was alone. It was not good for Adam to be alone. So God said, uh, God set about making a help meet suitable for him. That's Genesis 2.18. Listen to this again. A help meet suitable for him. And meet is not mate. You know, you're not just there to mate. You're there to meet, M-E-E-T. Um, and so you, ha you have to understand here that 
Eve was not just created so that Adam can have a mate. She was also created so that Adam could have someone as a suitable help meet. All right. Let's let's get that clear. She says, as a side note, uh, men typically typically don't do well when they're alone. They tend to get themselves in trouble. You know, um, perhaps that is why she suggests that perhaps that's why divorced men um, or widowed men uh, seem to do better. And they even get a married sooner, they remarried sooner. That's her opinion. It doesn't have is is there's no statistics to back up that fact here in her report. Okay. Um, she says sometimes God works in, in bizarre ways. And God said, Well, you need a wife, Genesis 2 and 18. So what's God's solution? He says, Well, let me give you some animals to name. At that point, he didn't mention a wife. Immediately, if you go back up to 17 and then you read into 18, as soon as God says, oh, it's not good that you be alone. Then he goes to say, well, and start naming the animals. Like, what well, God, I thought you was going to give me a solution to my loneliness. Isn't it funny how you can pray for one thing? And God will answer in a way that you totally did not expect him to answer. And it kind of throws you off a little bit because you're like, that's not what I was talking to you about, God. I was asking you about something totally different. And God just throws us for a loop uh, at times when he answers according to his will and according to his way. So here's what happens. Uh, go to 17. If you if you're following along in your Bible, Genesis 2, 17, um, go to 18. He says, and the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. He said, I'm going to make him a help me for him. And then in 19, he goes to say, well, out of the ground, <laughs> the Lord God formed every beast of the field, every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them and whatsoever. Adam called every living creature, that was his name, or that was the name thereof. So 20 says that Adam gave names to all the cattle all, and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found it help me. So you see, he, he starts talking about what he's going to do for him in 18, but he doesn't do it until we get to verse 21. And such it is when we're praying for something. God might not answer you right away in the way you think he should answer through the person. You know, you could be praying for a specific person. You know, I know people that that is convinced, sold out in their mind that a particular person in the, is their husband or their wife. And that's what they're praying for. They're they're just stuck right there. You know, they're, they have a head of flint. Their eyes are forward, and th this what God said. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna give up on what I want. All right, all right. Well, here's what happened. So they're praying. For th you're praying for one thing, and then God God tells you, "Well, go prepare yourself." What? I'm telling you, God, I'm ready for a, a, a spouse. I'm ready for a relationship. And then you turn around and tell me, go prepare myself. Go get this in order. Go get that in order. Go fix this. Go handle that. So we see the same thing happening. He notices that Adam has a problem. There's a problem here with his creation. Well, what's the problem? Everybody has somebody except Adam. And so... What he did, he says, well, I noticed everybody got something, somebody but Adam. But what he did, instead of giving Adam a wife first, listen to this, he gives him work first. Instead of giving Adam a wife first, he gives him work first. Even though he recognizes that he's alone, even though he recognizes that you need he needs somebody um physically that looks like him, that is of him, that came out of him, that is of the same species as him, he does not automatically give him what he does, what he needs. What he does, he gives him uh, work instead of a wife. All right. So before you can ask for a wife, gentlemen, 
Ask God for work. Ask God, what can you do with your hands? What provisions must do you need to make? So I just don't want to talk to the women tonight. I also want to talk to the men just a tad bit if you would hear me. All right. So listen to this. So uh, what happened was instead of God giving Adam a wife, he gives him a job naming the animals, you know. Uh, so that has happened to us uh, several times, you know. So you ask God for one thing. He gives you something else to do, something that seems completely unrelated to the request. You ask him for a spouse. Here's what I was telling you. He makes you finish school. He makes you find your calling ministry. Or worse yet, <laughs> he gives you a job to do. You know, you'll ask him for one thing, but he'll get you prepared for something completely different. It seems what God is doing, he is helping you get prepared for that thing you have prayed for. I think with women, we we get in a hurry sometimes, particularly if we've been single for a long time. You know, we kind of get in a hurry. Some of women still want to try to have kids or they still want to try to do this, do that and the third. And they feel like, well, time is running out. You know, I'm getting older, you know, you know, or, or my kids are grown now and it's my time, but nothing's happening. Or me and my age don't have their stuff together, you know, or, you know, men are shady, men are this, men are that. Can I just tell you guys something? Um, you can't put everybody in the same boat no more than it's fair for a man to say, well, all women are the same. That's such an unfair assessment. So we want to be fair across the board. So women, we got to stop. If you have been saying that all men are this or all men are that, we got to stop saying that because certainly we don't want men to keep saying, well, all women are like this. Okay. So let's just be fair across the board. So here we get into why does God give Adam the charge of naming the animals before he gives him a wife? Well, naming the animals, listen to this, was to prepare Adam for his helpmate. God gave Adam work before he gave him a wife. He gave him a mission before he gave him a mate. Our motto, she says, our motto ought to be no mission, no mate. Here's the thing. If you think that you need to be working so that God can give you someone to compliment your work, she says that's what her she's thinking. She thinks that a man should be working in order for God to give him a help me. She was like, a wife is supposed to be the help me. If you're not working, why do you need help? You only need help if and when you're actually doing something that requires aid. That I agree with, you know. She says that um, she believes that after. After remarking that Adam needed a help me comparable to him, um, God wanted Adam to name the animals to highlight the fact that none of these animals were comparable to him and emphasize Adam's uniqueness and aloneness. So it's, it's not that men don't know what they need. It's just that they have to wait until they recognize what they need. And ladies, it is not your job it's it's not your job to make him know what he need i know a lot of people say you know um it takes a woman to help a man to see his potential and all of that well that's not really scriptural and a lot of times that just turns into a different kind of situation well, what needs to happen is while he's asleep you need to be preparing yourself for when he wakes up so you can be presented to him all right. So we're going to talk about what we do, what we need to do to prepare ourselves as well. So Adam needed to notice and realize his lack and sense of his need for companionship so that when the much anticipated wife came, she would be appreciated. All right. So it's nothing like giving somebody a gift that they don't appreciate. Do you agree with that? And so what's happening here, he says that. Uh, going without and being in need allows future appreciation, okay? The longer you are without something, the greater you'll appreciate, you'll appreciate it when you do get it. And that's what she's talking about. She says, God performs the first recorded transplant by taking a rib from Adam to create, build, and form Eve. Taking the rib from the 
side was intentional and symbolic. Um, Ellen White and Patriots and Prophets wrote that E was to, was to be by his side as an equal to be loved and protected by him. Matthew Henry says it this way, women are created from the rib of a man to be beside him, not from his head to top him, nor from his feet to be trampled by him, but from under his arm to be protected by him, near to his heart to be loved by him. So this brings her uh, to the point that uh, why did God have to put Adam to sleep to do what he did? Remember that well, that was our question when we first started out. Why is it necessary that we as women allow men to sleep? And a lot of times you can be interested in a man and you can know that God is working on him or you can see some areas in him that God needs to work on. But, you know, don't get so hotsy totsy, you know, till you just. You know, you, you you put the man in an awkward position where he got to choose between, you know, going to sleep to allow God to work on him or going to bed with you. You know, don't put a man in that position because it depends on where he is in his walk with the Lord. It depends on where he is in his uh, in his flesh. You know, if you cause a good man to fall, you know, that's going to be on you. And then, I mean, you, you can't then you can't say, well. And then if it don't work out, you can't be the one to say, well, all he wanted was to get in my bed or get, get in my clothes and this and the third. And, you know, the Lord told me, no, 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 no. That dog is not going to hunt, honey. Child, you cannot be the aggressor, you know, sexually aggressive towards a good man. And then when you get him to fall with you, you can't turn around and blame him for what you wanted, you know. You pushed and pushed and you got what you wanted. You you awaken the man before time. Let the man sleep. Let him rest while God is working on him. And while God is working on him, you work on you. That that is our job. That is that is what makes us, you know, so unique, you know. And again, stop trying to wake the man up. You you're doing everything you can to get his attention. You know, and honey, just let him sleep. Let God work on him, okay? Because again, if you wake him up, what if you wake him up and God's not done working on him? You ever been awakened at your sleep abruptly? Honey, when something jars me out of my sleep, I wake up with a headache. I wake up you know, not in my cheerful. When I wake up, normally I'm in a good mood. I like to play jokes on people. I might pull a prank on somebody. I'm talking about just waking up, like for real. Wake up and start. I'm very playful when I wake up. However, when I'm jarred out of my sleep, no, that's, that's, I don't feel like playing. You know, I just want to know why did you wake me up like that? And such as it is, if God is working on a man that you're involved with or you, you really like him, ladies. Let him sleep. Let let God work on him. Stop trying to put yourself in his, uh, you know, in his uh, view so that he notices certain things about you. You know, and you guys know we can be quite um, enticing when we want to be. But your enticement of him could really be going against the will and the timing of God that God has already uh, preordained for you guys to move forward in your relationship, okay? So, um, and, I, and I know this, I, I said this earlier, this might be a little bit, uh, that ain't that what I thought I was going to hear. I thought I was going to hear something juicy. I thought she was going to tell us how to get a man. I'm telling you how to get the one that God ordained for you and how you can stop going from man to man and from bed to bed. All right, sweethearts. That's what I'm trying to get to you because quiet is kept. It's a lot of women in church that are dealing with this sex issue, you know, and you can't say it's because men are this or men are dogs or men just come after women for the wrong reason. No, 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 no. A lot of women are sexually aggressive towards church men, especially, you know, 
I don't know if the objective is to see if you can get him to fall, see if you can get him to change his mind. I don't really know. I don't want to speak to what your objectives are. However, the end result is still going to be the same. And nine times out of 10, when you make a good man fall, he's going to later on have some resentment against you. He might enjoy you for the moment, but once he realizes he, you have set him at odds against God and you have set him at odds against what he had planned to do, there's going to be some resentment built up there. Trust me, I know this from talking to too many women that have gone through that, all right? So, so why did God have to put Adam to sleep? To say that he needed to perform sanctified surgery on Adam like a surgeon making an incision into an anesthesia's body, it seems too simple of an answer. God doesn't always put us to sleep. Sometimes he spits in mud, you know, he makes a, a saliva salve, you know, uh, for a blind man. Sometimes he just tell a lame person to get up and walk, you know. So what was the significance of him putting Adam to sleep? God has formed the whole world just by speaking. Uh, you go back to Genesis 1 and God said whatever he said, it just came to be. So then why was it necessary for God to put Adam to sleep in order to what he needed to do. Um, here's the answer. God put Adam to sleep so he could work. Can you imagine if God had allowed Adam to stay awake? Adam would have been like, why her hair so short? Can't you make her hair longer? Why her boobs are so little? Can't you make her boobs a little bigger, God? Oh, why her waist like that? I want her waist to look, you know, thinner. Or can you, I want my woman to look thicker. He would have had all this input, you know, all, all these, all this input into what the woman looked like, you know, all this input into God's business. He would have just been talking to God and God would have been trying to do his work. And Adam just would, but I don't like her like that. I don't like her that color. Why her hair that color? He make her hair a different color. You know, can you make her taller? Can you make her shorter? Can you make her thinner? Can you make her a little bit more media? Can you make her more curvier? Can you imagine what would have happened if God had not put Adam to sleep? Adam would have just been all over the place, honey. And so I, I just think it's because God did not want Adam interrupting him. He didn't want Adam's input. He didn't need his input because remember, he alone is God, okay? And so uh, it would have been funny, you know, when I say funny, I mean, aha funny, to hear God and Adam go back and forth, back and forth about the way this woman looked that God was creating to be a help me to Adam, okay? Um, and then can you imagine Adam be like, is she ready yet? You done with her yet? You know, I'm I'm ready to see her. And God's like, dude, chill out. You know, I'm, I got to correct this. And you say you want this changed. And you don't like the way I did her this way. You know, you want her with a bigger butt. You want her with bigger boobs. Then you want her with a smaller waist. You know, can you imagine God and Adam going at it like that had Adam not been put to sleep? And so sometimes, uh, what happens is that uh, sometimes we'll we'll get to the point where we're fatigued and we're frustrated and we finally, we surrender. So the Bible says that, and Adam slept. That was his surrendering to the will of God. At what point can you, you're ready to surrender? We got to be ready to surrender in order to get what God has for us, okay? Um, the next thing I want to talk to you guys about, and I'm just about done for tonight. I'm going to pick it back up tomorrow. Um, so we, we see that God had to put Adam to sleep so he could do his work. He says, she says, sometimes she thinks that God get tired. We get, we must get tired so that God can work on us. All right. Um, hold on. Let me get. Uh, Instagram back. They can only go for an hour on Instagram. And I'm getting pretty good at this, guys. Oh, I got them right back.
I'm pretty good at it. And so um, she says that perhaps one reason why he put Adam to sleep so that God could work on his behalf. If Adam had been awake, he just would get in God's way. You know, um, everything God did, Adam would have wanted input on it. You know, like I said, he would have wanted input on why her hair short? I want her to have long hair. Or why you gave her long hair? I want her to have short hair. Or why you gave her that color hair? And then when God got to the boobs, he would have been like, oh, can you make a boobs uh, just one or two cup size bigger? Or can you make a butt a little bigger? Well, can you make a waist a little smaller? Can you give a little bit more thighs? You know, God would have had to go through all of that with Adam. So he was just like, boy, just go to sleep. Let me do what I got to do. You know, um, because it's easier to deal with people when they have a surrendered lifestyle. When you have a surrendered lifestyle, it's easier for people to deal with you. It's easier for God to deal with you when you have a surrendered lifestyle. It doesn't really take much to surrender to God. You just got to set yourself in agreement with his will. That's the easiest way I have learned to come into agreement with God and to surrender my will to the will of God is to understand that his will is what's best. His ways are better than my ways. His thoughts are better than my thoughts. And at the end of the day, he's always going to yield a result for me that uh, offers me life and life more abundantly. Me, sometimes I can get in my own way. Sometimes I can interpret things the wrong way. I say the wrong things. Sometimes at the wrong time, you know, all of those fallacies that we have within us are working there. But what we do have, we have the Holy Spirit also that tells us when, where, what, and how. All right. So for those who have prayed and prayed and you tried and tried and still there's no evidence that God is even hearing you or it seems like God just making you wait, you know, for a husband, you know, because he like making people wait. Or it seems like God's making you wait on a wife because he just like making you wait. You know, men, sometimes men get impatient. Men don't like being alone as much as we think they do. You know, a lot of times you will run into a man and he says, oh, I'm just not interested in getting married. I've been married before. I don't want to be married again. You know, then you'll you'll run into a man that's feel like he's absolutely ready to get married physically. But then financially, he has some things he wants to get in order. You know, whatever and wherever you meet a person, you can't judge them at that juncture, juncture, junction in their life. You just have to uh, get yourself prepared to be a help me. Here again, you can't help meet something when there's nothing there for you to help. Keep that in mind. Now, I'm not telling women to, you know, not follow after your heart, whatever. You know, some women don't mind a man not working. Some, some actually don't mind. You, you prefer your man not to work. Some women like taking care of their men. You know, some women like being the breadwinner, you know, no judgment, you know. Um, but keep in mind, before God gave Adam a wife, he gave him work. OK. All right. So you've tried and tried. And it seems there's no evidence of God answering. Perhaps there's some underlining work or behind the scene work that God is yet doing. OK, uh, maybe he's waiting for you to get tired so he can do your do what he has to do and bring you your mate. And I know that prayer works because a lot of us are recipients of prayer. We're here because somebody prayed for us. We're here because. Somebody's still praying for us. Somebody sent up timbers on our behalf. They they laid before God on the altar on our behalf. And so that's why a lot of us are still here. Um, and so once you get tired enough, you'll rest. You'll rest in what you have prayed for. Um, and you can even sleep. So if God is taking care of everything, you go ahead and go to sleep like Adam did. You know, that's what Jesus did when he when the ship rode into the storm with the disciples. Jesus got on boat and went to sleep. Why? Because he knew his father had everything in control and under control. So why does it necessarily women? Why is it necessarily that we allow the men 
to sleep. You got to let him sleep. If you keep pushing and nagging at him and trying to wake him up before time, you're going to get an unfinished product. You're going to get something that's left wide open. And anything that's left wide open is subject to infection, is subject to spoil, is subject to not heal properly. You got a lot of different complications that will come with something that's left open. So you want to let him stay asleep long enough, not only for God to take a rib out of him, but also give God time to close him back up and make sure he's healed from the inside out. And you know what? Here's the thing I love about God. God will never leave anything or anybody half done or undone. When God does a thing, he does it completely. He does it entirely and he does it wholly. And he also does it wholly. Y'all follow what I'm saying? And so when we got to learn how to just step back sometime, admire the view from afar sometimes and let God work out and work in and work through that man what needs to be done. You cannot take the place of God and go, wake up, wake up. Oh, you all right. You all right. That's over with. Get over there. Wake up. It's time to wake up. You cannot do that. Pre-adventure, you jar somebody out of their sleep. Ain't no telling what you might get. So, so let the men rest. Let him sleep. Let God work on him while God has his attention and while God has his submission. Let God work on him. Let him work on him. So uh, we understand now while you're sleeping, sleep help. It'll help time pass quickly. So if you're such in a hurry, you just want the man awake. You want him to be awakened and awakened. Well, that's what's taking so long because you keep waking him up before time. And that's why he can't recognize who you are. So he just thinks you're any other woman, honey. So that's why he treats you like you're any other woman. He talks to you like you're any other woman. He handles you like you're any other woman because you have not given him time to get his sleep out. You have not given God time to finish doing in him what he was doing in him. Remember, the scripture says that that. Adam slept and then God presented Eve to Adam. Well, how did Adam know who Eve was? Number one, he had never seen a woman. All Adam had ever seen was the animals. And, and you know, so how did he even know who Eve was? We're going to get into that in a minute. But before we get into that, I really want to drive home this point. You cannot, if you jar a man out of his sleep before it's time for him to wake up, ladies, you don't know what you're getting. You, you don't know what you're getting. So if a man tells you, let me give you a for instance. There was a situation. There was a case where a man and woman, they were dating. OK, two Christians were dating and they both were saying. That they wanted to wait to get married to have sex. OK. Both of them were uh, ministers of the gospel. They were in high positions. So they both decided we, it's better if we wait. So the woman had made her proclamation. And so did the man. So he says, well, yeah, you know, um, I, I've been waiting for several years. And uh, that's not something I'm willing to compromise on. You know, I'm not willing to compromise my anointing. I'm not willing to compromise my walk with the Lord. I'm not willing to compromise my position of faith in this area. You know, um, if, if if you can handle that, then we can be together. You know, uh, he was like, I know that sounds strange coming from a man these days, but this I'm firm on this. You know, many women have tried and when many women have broken up with me because I'm firm on my stand on my celibacy. She was like, well, okay, that's fine because I'm I'm in the same I'm in the same place you are. You know, I've been cel celibate for years. You know, I, I don't date much. You know, she said the same thing he said. So the relationship continues. They get into this relationship. They decided to start dating exclusively. Now they're dating a few months down the road. And now, you know. The truth is starting to show, you know, that perhaps she is not as committed to her walk with Christ and as committed to her life of celibacy as the gentleman is. And so what happens is 
she winds up, you know, kept pushing at him and kept pushing at him and kept pushing at him until they wind up having sex. Well, remember I told you if you push a man too soon, too far, too fast, um, he'll have some resentment towards you if when it doesn't work out. Well, that's what happened. He was very angry with her. And he was angry with her um, because he really loved her. He loved her, but he was trying to hold out until they were married. But, you know, she just kept pushing and she kept pushing. She kept being enticing and she kept being enticing, you know, and eventually he just was like, you know what? He just gave in, you know, um, she put him in a position to where it was almost impossible for him, you know, to keep saying no, because now she's questioning, are you a real man? You know, are you this? Are you that? Are you sure you like women? And you can't put a man in that position and challenge his manhood and expect him to just walk away like that. You know, so he was like, you know, I can show you better than I can tell you kind of deal. So they wind up having sex. And immediately after that, he was angry with her, you know, and the unfortunate thing about it, he was actually going to marry her. So they did. They wind up not getting married. And, you know, he wind up just stop speaking to her because he was so angry that she had gotten him to fall, you know, and I want women to know just because he is a man, it does not automatically mean all he's looking for is sex with you. Some men are looking for wife material. All right. And I want to ask you this question. Do you think that your wife material where you are currently? You know, so we cannot keep going about saying, well, men just want to sleep with, you know, all men just want to do is get in the bed with a woman. No, it's some women out there that are very, very aggressive sexually. And it's not all on the men. You know, that's not fair. It's just not fair to say that. I know personally, a lot of women that are pushing men and pushing men till he, till he just give in. You know, you put yourself not only in his view, you, you put yourself all up on his persons, you know, and, you know, you get them all in the mood. You playing around with him. You tease them. You're flirting with them. You're doing a whole bunch of stuff, you know. And then you're saying, oh, the Holy Spirit told me you was like that. Well, the Holy Spirit didn't tell you stop enticing the man that the man can't take but so much enticement before he go on and give in. The Holy Spirit didn't tell you that. So we, we have to level this playing field out here in this dating game and this thing where we're looking for relationships and we're looking for spouses. So we just got to start saying what's fair and what's right. It's not all men and, you know, it's not all women, you know. Everybody has their part to play in this particular game we call life. All right. So we see here it says sleeping allows you to pass the time more quickly. Sleep allowed Adam to not feel the surgery with both Adam and Eve being operated on in the process. Perhaps it was out of the great mercy of God why he put Adam to sleep. Sleep allows, sleeping allows you the privilege of not seeing what goes on. Sometimes I don't think it would be helpful or necessary for a future husband. Listen to this women, women listen to me. It may not be necessary or helpful, or I like to use the word advantageous for a future husband to witness, uh, to be a witness to, to the all be messy formation of his future wife, you know, and not just talking about Adam here. We're talking about real life, real time now, you know, and remember when I first started out, it may not be necessary for you to tell a man everything that you've gone through, how bad of a relationship you've had. You can't go around telling all men everything like that, because after a while, you know, uh, I'll use myself, for example. Uh, I don't answer the question, well, what are you looking for in a man? I'm not so quick to answer that question. And you want to know why? Because I can give you the ABCs of what I'm looking for. You'll turn right back around and give me the ABCs of what you what I'm looking for. And that's you'll just give me back what I told you. You won't give me back, you know, maybe the best of you. You'll be 
uh, reacting to what I've said. Instead of you getting to know me, getting to learn me, and you praying to God, I'm not asking you to be a mind reader. What I am asking you to be is in tune with the Holy Spirit. And if I got to sit down, put pen to paper to tell you, write down everything that I'm looking for, everything I expect for you to be, then I already know you're not the one. And I advise women, don't go about, you know, well, I had three bad uh, situations. You know, I was in two marriages. I was in 20 relationships. You know, all of them ended this way. And, you know, men just do me this. You know, don't don't go out there making yourself the victim. I don't think that's advantageous to you because, again, you're going to make yourself an easy prey or easy mark. OK, so and sometimes men don't need to know all of that about you. Keep some stuff to yourself. All right. Um, he doesn't need to uh, see. He doesn't need to have been around for the entire formation of what makes you you. You know, he doesn't need to some stuff. You just really should keep to yourself. You know, and I know you might think it's advantageous. You know, you want to put all your cards on the table, um, but you need to make sure that this guy is the one before you go. You know, bearing your soul. You can't just go from guy to guy to guy bearing your soul to everybody. I don't think that's wise to do. And more specifically, like I said in the beginning, I do not think it's advantageous for women to tout how long they've been single, how long they've been celibate, how long it's been since I had a man. You might think that that sounds attractive. You might think that it makes you more wife material because you've been by yourself for so long. You've been, you know, without sex for so long. You know, you just been living holy for so long. You might think that, that puts you at the top of the game or at the top of the, of the ladder or the top, you know, you, you're next in line to be picked as wife material. Ne not necessarily. It doesn't. Sometimes it raises questions, you know, like why you been single for so long? You don't even, you haven't even dated. Oh no, I don't, I don't date, you know, no, no, no. Jesus is my man. You know, you, you just can't be deep and wonderful. You can do deep, but don't be deep and wonderful. That's going to scare a man off. You know, he doesn't need to go through all of that with you. If God is making him and if God is working on him, he doesn't need you to try to play God for him. He doesn't need you to be his mother. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of times, we get those roles conflicted because we think we we are the fixers. You know, if you want a man that you got to fix, then something's lacking in you. You know, if you want a man that you feel like is broken and you got to put him back together, that's something more about you than it is about him. I'm, I'm just going to put that out there. You know, so we got to be careful about putting too much information out there too soon. and particularly to every man you talk to, every man that you meet is not going to be your husband. You know, every man that you talk to or that you meet is not going to be the one God sent, you know, so we, we got to stop, you know, trying to make ourselves look more uh, wife materialish, if you will. Um, yeah, I just made up a word. We got to stop trying to make ourselves look more wife materialish by trying to come out as this, uh, martyr or this victim of some sort, you know, because we've been through so much. True, there is a, a time and place where you could tell your story, but don't let your story always lead the conversation when you're trying to get to know a gentleman and when you want a gentleman to get to know you. You want him to know you by knowing himself, first of all, by knowing the voice of God and by knowing that you are a good wife material. You don't want him to know you by, you know, all times what you've been through, your stories, who did you wrong, you know, why this relationship didn't work out. For me, I don't even like to discuss previous relationships unless we're getting serious. You know, I don't want to know who you dated. I don't want to know who you slept with. I don't want to know any of that. I, I really don't. I don't want to know any of that. I don't want to know what kind of woman you dated. I don't want to know any of that, you know, because this is my philosophy. If she was all that and y'all was all that wonderful together, why are you sitting here talking to me? Why are you on my phone? You know, so I don't want to hear, I don't want to hear about 
all of that, you know, and somebody might think, well, you shouldn't be like that if they want to talk. No, I don't want to hear it no more than a man should want to hear a woman he's interested in sit there talk about another man. You know, I just don't think that's advantageous to a new relationship. So um, she says here that uh, she doesn't think that, you know, um, men should be around. Hold on. Let me plug up my laptop. So I won't lose. Um, I didn't know it was unplugged. All right. I almost lost you too. You guys are still here. You're good. So um, she says he doesn't need to have been privy to all the abuse, the heartaches, the triumphs, the failures, and the acclimation of your baggage. He just needs to be there for you when you're ready to unpack and start a new life with him together. I totally agree with that. Totally, totally agree with that. So my last point to you is, why didn't Eve awaken Adam? Why, why didn't God allow Eve to awaken Adam? Why, why did God awaken him? You know, why not let the woman wake him up and surprise him? Like, honey, I'm here. You know, why did God not allow Eve to awaken Adam as soon as he formed her from his rib? I want you guys to think about that. And we're going to talk about that. Um, on our next session, um, why did God not allow Eve to wake up Adam? I want y'all to think about that, all right? Um, it's going to be interesting to find out. So we'll probably finish this over the next two days. So you guys set your notifications. I'll probably We're going to finish this tomorrow and Sunday evening around the same time, if not a little earlier, okay? All right, so I'm going to stop there because my voice is feeling funny now. And so ladies, I want you to understand where I'm coming from with this with this lesson, if you will want to call it that. I want you to understand that God has something so specific and so special in store for us, for those women that are single, waiting on God, you know, waiting for the right man to show up and find you or what have you or however you know, you uh, talk about that particular thing. But just know this, there are some things that you can do in order to prepare yourself while the man you wait on is being worked on by God. First, thing I want you to do, stop trying to wake up every man you meet because every man that you meet, first of all, he's not asleep. And so pre adventure you go to poking and, and, and tapping on somebody who's not asleep meaning who's not fully committed, who's not fully submitted to the will and to the voice of God, you may get yourself into a situation that has nothing to do with the will of God for you. And when you get into a situation with with, with a man that has nothing to do with your destiny, nothing to do with the will of God for you, I'm going to promise you, you're going to wind up in the bed with him prematurely. And nine times out of 10, that does not work out. You know, um, I talk to a lot of men and a lot of men, I'm not going to say most or half, I'm not going to try to give you any percentage of numbers or anything, but trust me on this, ladies. Sometimes men don't always marry the women that they're sleeping with. They'll marry the one that they haven't slept with, you know. So you got some women that you play with and some that you marry. Just like some women have some men they sleep with and play with and some that they choose to marry. But it's more so uh, men will do that. So I want you as women to know. Don't keep putting yourself out there. Don't keep just poking at the man and poking at him till you get him to follow. And then when you get him to follow with you, you want to run away and cry the victim and start talking about, oh, men ain't no good. Church men just as worse as men in the world. You know, no, they're not, you know, because they can't do no more than what we let them do. You know, and if you don't poke the bear, don't wake them up before time. Let God do what he got to do to him and in them and through them. And while God is working on him, I'm going to tell y'all some things that we as women can be doing to prepare ourselves, watch this, to be presented to the man. Not so we can go wake him up before time, 
so that we can be presented to him when God wakes him up. He will know you because he has been with God. He will know you because he has spent that time with God, because God has reached into him and pulled you out of him. And when it's time for God to bring you and him together, he'll recognize you because you'll look like something that has been a part of him. All right. We're going to get into that the next time. All right. But I'm going to go for now because I remember I told you on yesterday, I was going to do a live yesterday, but my throat was really, really parchy. And then I kept sneezing and my nose was sniffy and runny. Um, but I did take um, a nighttime alcohol seltzer. So I felt pretty good today, well enough to come on. But I knew I could not do the normal two hour show that we're accustomed to doing. So um, we're going to close out. And I'm going to be back tomorrow. I might come on a little early tomorrow. Uh, but wherever you're watching me from, set your notifications. Um, and you all guys do me a favor. Share, share, share. Please share and help us get our numbers up. Also, and just help get the word out that um, what's on your mind is back on to our regular schedule now. And listen. Um, first quarter, maybe second quarter of next year, you're going to see our entire set change. You're going to see our platform change. And so I want you guys to ride the way with us until we cross over until that change season. Um, but in the meantime, we still will be what's on your mind. I am your host, Benita, and I pray that you guys have enjoyed the show. I pray you guys have really gleaned from the information that I bring to you. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to get into why do men need to sleep? We're going to talk about all of that. We're going to talk about um, um, why did God allow, why did God not allow Eve to wake up Adam? And then we're going to talk about how did Adam know who Eve was if he was asleep the whole time God was creating her. All right, we're going to get into that. We're going to talk, look at the Mayo Clinic and see what happens to a man's body when he don't get the enough, get enough sleep and what happens when he do get enough sleep and how we as women can make sure that they are getting the sleep that they want. All right. All right. So until tomorrow night, um, thank you guys so much for tuning in on tomorrow night. I'll start talking in a little bit. I do have a book out on communication. I want you guys to go over to Amazon.com. Uh, let's see if I have a copy right here. Um, I want you guys to go to Amazon.com and get a copy of my book on communication. It's called um, Don't Take It Personal, Keys to Better Communication. Go over to Amazon.com, look it up by the title or look it up by my name. I think they have my name listed on Amazon. Um, Pastor Benita Bradley. Go over there. You can pull up all my books or you can order from my web store at www.benitabradleyministries.org. All right. Go over to our web store. There's a cart there. We take all major credit cards and uh, PayPal. OK, we take PayPal and all major credit cards over there, uh, bank or debit. You know, we take all all major Visa, MasterCard, all of that in our web store. All right. So you can head over there and purchase your materials. When you get them from our, our online store, they will come to you directly from me, autographed by me with a special, special message. But if you could get them from amazon.com, of course, I cannot autograph them because they ship them directly to you. Uh, one day now with your prime account, Amazon um, is absolutely wonderful about getting you your material at the time that they say they would. All right. All right. So until then, I want you guys to do well. And I want you guys to know women again, let God wake him up. All right. Let the man sleep. Let him sleep and let God wake him up. All right. Till next time. I love you and thank you for watching. Bye bye.